Welcome to Planetary Imaging Histogram. A histogram is a graphical representation of the distribution of data. You'll find histograms in your capture software and processing software. In your capture software, you can use them to get the best gain and exposure settings. In the processing software, you'll use them to keep the overall brightness up without getting any oversaturated regions. A histogram tells us something about the brightness of the pixels in our image. For planetary imaging, we typically use 8-bit numbers to represent the brightness of a pixel. In binary, the number is made up of 1s and zeros. Here we see what values we can get with 8 bits of data. The smallest value is 0, which is pure black. The numbers go up one by one until we have all 1s, the highest value, which is pure white. The highest value that can be represented with 8 bits is 255. Notice how the most significant bit, the one on the left, is 0 for the first half, the numbers going from 0 through 127, and 1 for the second half, the numbers going from 128 through 255. This means that if we only use half our brightness, we are still getting 7 bits worth of data. If you're dealing with color, then each pixel has 8 bits for red, 8 for green, and 8 for blue, or 24 bits total. This is the color edit control in Microsoft Paint. Notice how the maximum value for each color is 255. To make things simpler, and easier to see, we will pretend that our camera only has 10 brightness values, 0 through 9. A histogram is just a bar chart, even though it is often presented as a line chart. The leftmost bar represents the number of pixels that have the value of 0. The next bar tells us how many pixels have the value of 1, and so on, up to 255, or 9 in our example here. Here is a picture of Jupiter in Registax. We bring up the histogram, and we notice on the left side here that there are a lot of pixels with very low values because most of the picture is in the night sky. You may have a dark spot in the middle of your planet and those pixels are counted the same as the dark sky pixels and will also end up on the left side of the histogram. The brightest pixels will end up here on the histogram. They are relatively few so we can't see them very well at this scale. We can see them though by checking the log base graph checkbox. We can rescale the image so that 0 starts here instead of here. After we press the stretch button, all those pixels with these small values will be set to 0 and also won't show up on the histogram anymore. This also allows you to see the relative brightness levels of the brighter pixels without having to check the log base graph checkbox. This is a 16-bit TIFF, so the brightness levels go from 0 to over 65,000 instead of the 0 through 255 I talked about earlier. Your computer monitor can only display 256 different brightness levels, so you can't see what you actually have, but the sharpening algorithm does see it. This is why we keep 16 bits until the very end when we convert to JPEG. That conversion to JPEG scales the 65,000 brightness levels to 256 levels. You might be wondering how you got 16-bit data from a camera that only gives 8 bits of data. This happens when we stack our images together. Imagine we take only 1,000 frames of Jupiter. Let's say that this pixel right here has a brightness value of around 100. All 1,000 frames won't have the same exact value of 100. It may vary from 90 to 110, for example. After they are all added up, we get 100,000 for the total. This is larger than can even fit in a 16-bit TIFF, so the stacking software has to scale it back. Now we press the stretch button and can see the relative brightness levels of the brighter pixels. This stretching to eliminate the big bump on the left side of the histogram may or may not be a good thing for making the best image, but I sometimes have to do it before pushing the auto balance button that is in the RGB balance tool. I really like this feature but it sometimes gives wacky results if I don't first clip off the bump on the left side of the histogram. 
In iCAT, you can bring up the histogram by clicking on this icon in the main toolbar. Notice that the horizontal axis is labeled, showing the values go from 0 through 255. Often the axes are not labeled on a histogram because it's understood that the horizontal axis goes from 0 on the left side up to full bright on the right side. The vertical axis goes from 0 on the bottom up to some maximum number of pixels, which is usually of no interest to us. With Planet, you'll have a lot of black pixels, and you'll want to select this Clip At checkbox. This will allow you to see the few pixels that are your planet, so you can adjust your gain and exposure. I've made another video that goes into more detail on that. Fire Capture also has a histogram display. You can turn it on and off with this checkbox. You have the option of having the histogram be displayed in a separate window, like this, or you can have it overlaid on your video. To change your preference, we go into the histogram settings. The top checkbox is the one to change. We uncheck this box and then go back to see our histogram, which is now overlaid onto the video. You may hear about setting the percent histogram for capture. The percent histogram is the value of the brightest pixel divided by 255. For example, suppose the brightest pixel has a brightness value of 114. On the histogram, all the values higher than 114 will be 0, and you'll have a 44% histogram, as 114 is 44% of 255. You might think that you want to aim for a 100% histogram, because that way you get the most out of your 8 bits. With a dimmer picture, we can get more frames, so it is nice to know that we are still getting 7 bits of data with a 50% histogram and 6 bits of data with a 25% histogram. I would say to never try for more than a 90% histogram during capture. If at any time a pixel goes all the way to 255, then you don't know if it should be 255 or 300 or more. The pixel has hit the upper limit and is being restricted from going higher and no longer represents the brightness for that pixel. You might want to capture with a low histogram, say around 30%. The image will be dim, but this will allow you to get more frames. You can get back the brightness during stacking, and then you'll have 16 bits of data per pixel. I am still experimenting to figure out what is the optimal percent histogram. The things that affect your percent histogram for a given target are gain, exposure, and focal ratio. You should try playing with all these variables to see what works best. Also realize that what works best for Mars may not be what works best for Saturn. To simplify things, I aim for a focal ratio that is five times the camera's pixel size in microns. See my video on which Barlow to see why. With only the gain and shutter speed to play with, there are fewer trials to perform. I have another video where I go through the trade-offs between gain and shutter speed. For stacking my frames, I now use Auto Stacker 2. One feature I really like is this Normalize Stack checkbox. This makes your stacked image have a specified percent histogram. This is useful for making animations, so each picture in your animation will have the same brightness. But I also like it because it allows me to get a desired percent histogram. If I captured Saturn at 25% histogram, I can increase it to 75% here. Remember that the output file is a 16-bit TIFF. A 25% histogram is still using 14 bits, which is more than enough. The main reason for upping it to 75% is so it is not so dim on the screen when applying wavelet sharpening. The reason for not going too high, say 95%, is because wavelet sharpening increases the percent histogram, and if we go over 100%, then we have to come back here and restack with a lower setting. Here we are in Registax on the Wavelet tab. We push this button here to bring up the histogram. And we see that we have a 75% histogram. That's going to increase though as we apply sharpening with these Wavelet sliders over on the left side of the screen. When we're all done sharpening, we don't want to see any pixels with the maximum brightness level. I'll show you what that looks like by artificially oversharpening this image. If you see pixels with the maximum brightness level, then you need to go back to Auto Stacker and restack your AVI with lower values for the normalized stack option. 
This is the end of this video. If you would like to learn more, then click on one of the four quadrants of the screen to watch another video. There's a video on which Barlow, which explains how to find the optimal focal ratio, which depends on the pixel size of your camera. The video on exposure, gain, etc. gives tips on how to find the best settings. I have a separate video which will introduce you to some of the tools available on the right hand side of the Wavelet tab in Registax. To see a listing of all my videos on planetary imaging, then click on the bottom right quadrant.